So good afternoon, colleagues. I'm uh, coming to you from from Nairobi, Kenya, the Afro Emergency Hub. So a special shout out to my colleague Felix Sani, who is there with us and who will uh, present right after me. So I would like to first go over the uh, global cholera surveillance that we do at uh, WHOHQ. As Natalie said earlier, I'm part of the uh, analytics team as a data manager and uh, would like to kind of show you the how of what her presentation was about, uh, how we're doing that and uh, go over that in the, in the next 10 minutes here. So the main two things we're doing here at HQ is one, the development of a global color database and two, the development of all of the analytical outputs that Natalie had already kind of shown. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about how we're developing this global color database. Uh, the idea from our side is to kind of consolidate cholera data from all of the regions that are affected and build a historical cholera data set at HQ where we can harmonize the, all of the different sets of data into one database. And by doing so, then we can start to look at week-to-week uh, -week epi updates, develop epi curves, attack rate maps, look at CFR, build forecast models, and do that all at different geographical levels from the district level all the way up to the regional and global level and uh and i will say because alexander mentioned it earlier when i say regional level it will be multi-country level uh not sub-national level so the idea is to identify trends in geographical spread and especially to look at uh, areas that that have risk for cross-border tr uh, transmission so Kind of to give you a brief overview of of what we're doing we'll talk about the, the data management side and how we kind of start from data collection, how we enter it in, where we store it, uh, cleaning it, analyzing it, and our output. So essentially going from CITREP after CITREP after CITREP and kind of lineless data and aggregated Excel files, all the way to being able to build uh, kind of monthly attack rate maps that show the spread of cholera over the last month. So let me let me kind of give you an introduction to that. So we start out, uh, we have a team at HQ uh, that collects data and enters it in. So we're looking at a combination of different data sources from CITREPs to country presentation PowerPoints to press releases. And these are all, these three different sources are all collected uh, manually, which means a lot of uh, slow data scraping, especially if a country is giving us more data at uh, more granular levels like uh, administrative two or even up to administrative three levels. Some countries will give us these weekly aggregated Excel files or lineless Excel files, which, we've, we'll, which, we, uh, which we automate on our end. And I'll talk a bit more about that later on. And the whole idea is to uh, right now kind of have this global data entry form that we, uh, that we have on the WHO SharePoint. It's a validated Excel file where we enter in data for every country at whatever sub-national level that they provide us in the CITREP or or whatever they have from a country presentation PowerPoints. And we do so using trying to follow the GTFCC guidance uh, uh, for uh, regional and global surveillance. And this means looking at uh, a minimum set of cholera indicators and kind of building on that more and more variables, uh, depending on how much we can collect. And as I mentioned, we do it at the lowest possible subnational uh, level. So I'll give you uh, one example, uh, kind of show you what what our online uh, entry form looks like. This is an example of one epi week for Mozambique. Uh, Mozambique gives us uh, really, really good data. I think we get, uh, this is 53 rows of data that we entered in, in epi week 16. So I think last week, uh, we entered all the way down to the admin two level. So you can see the, the left-hand column is Mozambique. And then we have the admin one level, the province, and then the district level. So it's, it's a lot of work for us to, to do this every week, but uh, we make sure we get it done and uh, it, it, it makes for a better analysis for sure. From this online Excel file, we, we move the data automatically through a pipeline to XMART, which is a, a platform, an in-house WHO platform where we harmonize and host, uh, host data. It's kind of an online database that we can visualize uh, on any internet platform and we can run pipelines to the data and from the data as well. So we, we have a pipeline that goes from this online Excel file to the XMART system. 
And from there, we can kind of consolidate all of the different regions uh, of data that we get and pull it automatically uh, whenever we get a new CITREP in and whenever we enter in this data from the new CITREP. As well, uh, besides the, the data that we enter in on, uh, manually, we also have pipelines that automatically upload the data to XSmart if we get uh, Excel files from certain regions. And, and one example is Baho, who, who has built a, a nice pipeline straight to XSmart where they send an Excel file once a week with historical data. So we have all uh, Haiti data and Dominican Republic data, and this gets uploaded uh, automatically uh, to, to our database. And from that, we can generate uh, views and tables within the XSmart system to develop summary statistics, which will help kind of clean the data as we look to uh, make our outputs. This is an example of what XSmart looks like. So I just showed you the, the online data entry form from the SharePoint. And as it gets pulled automatically into XSmart, uh, we can see an example here of, of a, a table of Mozambique. So I, I chose the exact same data from last week. You can see it says at the bottom 58 rows of data. So 58 different uh, districts slash uh, different subnational levels worth of data. And here we've got on the left hand side kind of validation through foreign keys, which allow us to know exactly uh, which geographical subunit it is and we can tie that into gis maps and gis layers layers down down the road yeah, uh, when we develop attack rate maps etc from xsmart and and right now currently straight from the online excel file we we have a pipeline that goes to uh, in our environment which we which we keep in a like github which allows us to uh, have version control so Essentially, we're going from an online Excel file that we enter data into slash having automated data pumped straight to XMART. We have an automatic pipeline that runs from XMART and from the online uh, entry form directly to our R environment. This R environment that we have, we've developed a lot of scripts to, to uh, output epi curves, the CFR, attack rate maps. All this code is available and shared between HQ, country offices, regional offices. And uh, for example, I'm based at the emergency hub here in Nairobi, and I'm working with my colleague, Felix. We are sharing the code between the two of us, between the regional office here and HQ, to make sure that we're not duplicating work, and to make sure that uh, moving forward, Afro has uh, access and can build upon what we've already developed and vice versa. This code is also available for uh, external partners. Uh, so if there's any, uh, any external partners uh, in the audience who would like to get in contact with us, we can discuss it afterwards. Within the R environment, we, we develop uh, a lot of different outputs that Natalie has already kindly shared for us. So I wanna kind of just show you a, a brief example of a few of them again. So the first thing is epi curves, and we developed this at every single geographical level that we can. So the global level, the regional level, which this example shows uh, the region of Afro, and we've within the epi curve, we've split it up into Central, East, Southern, and West Africa. And you can see quite clearly that uh, in week 12 was the peak, and ever since then, it's been declining quite, quite steadily. Not only that, but uh, we develop uh, epi curves at the subnational level. So I had just shown you a few minutes ago how we entered in 58 rows of data for Mozambique last week. From this 58, over the course of weeks and months, we we're able to develop epi curves at the subnational district level and provincial level of Mozambique. And you can see within this figure that uh, we've, you can see Cabo Delgado in the bottom left hand corner. How the epi curve it shows that the outbreak has just started in, in the last month. Moving on to some maps, so we have a GIS component to our outputs, which highlights the geographical spread and allows us to better visualize attack rates, uh, specifically multi country attack rates. So, I want to show a quick example uh, how cholera has spread in the last months, and you can kind of focus on so, this is starting in January 2023 and moving to April 2023. You can focus on Mozambique as it moves towards Zimbabwe in April, 
and uh, I know our Zimbabwe colleague in uh, the previous presentation spoke about the difference and the need for analysis at uh, the district level. Right now we're getting data from Zimbabwe at the admin one level, so the provincial level, and this might show you a, a bit of a different story uh, rather than if we had data at a more granular level. But I uh, just want to show you a quick how the attack rate over month, month over month, April, spread to Zimbabwe. So once again, thank you to the Zimbabwean colleague for, for highlighting that this may not show the exact story, but if if we do have more granular data, we can we can show a bit of uh, a better story. What else we developed is some severity from uh, CFR. So this is an example from Malawi that shows, uh, I don't know if it's a bit small for you guys, but uh, it shows uh, in, in April, from March to April, how CFR changes depending on, on the, how the outbreak is. And lastly, I wanna show an example of the daily incidence projections. Uh, this is also from Malawi. So kind of projections uh, uh, of uh, cases and, and modeling to show where what we might expect in the future, given the data that we already have. So these are our outputs. And I just want to quickly highlight some achievements from the HQ team uh, before I pass it over to Felix. Uh, what we've developed uh, since the IMST formed a few months ago is we have uh, from HQ, we develop a weekly global cholera data pack that we share in confidence with operational partners. And once a month, we release a monthly global, global cholera CITREP, which is publicly available. And uh, I've shared the link on the slides. So if you have, uh, when, when you have time, you can, you can follow up with that. In addition, uh, we support to Afroinfo products from weekly cholera data pack to the weekly bulletin, as well as the daily cholera report. And just to highlight what HQ is doing uh, with uh, regional offices and country offices, there have been some deployments. Uh, for example, myself, it's, it's a bit funny to read myself in third person on a slide, but uh, myself here in Kenya at the emergency hub, Natalie, as you can see, to Mozambique, Rocio, uh, from the GIS team to Equatorial Guinea. And as well, we're giving remote sessions, remote training sessions from HQ, and this is done by Grace. She's been working with Malawi, DRC, in Somalia on forecast modeling. And I, I just I just want to highlight uh, some achievements on data sharing. This is uh, one of the most important parts of data management for the cholera outbreak and the relationship building that's gone on between HQ, the regional office, especially here at Afro and PAHO, and with country offices as we continue to get in touch with more and more country offices on how to better share data uh, so that we're not having to manually uh, extract data from CITREP so often. And I just want to say a, a big thank you to PAHO for, for setting up uh, the pipeline directly to XMART and being able to share automatic data from Haiti and from Dominican Republic on a weekly basis. And also for the lines that we get from DRC, Malawi, and Somalia. Now, importantly, we should discuss quickly uh, the challenges that we've been facing over the last months. And, and maybe this will provide some good discussion later on uh, about how we can solve these challenges. Uh, one of the biggest challenges for us is data collection. Uh, and as Alexander mentioned, we see a lot of heterogeneity of the CITREPs from country to country. Case definitions can change in different CITREPs. The variables that they include in CITREPs are different from country to country, and even within the same country, depending on uh, the part of the outbreak. The incompleteness in data that we received, reporting delays, retrospective corrections, which uh, is something that can be solved by by getting data from the back end rather than just relying upon week to week CITREPs or daily CITREPs, and really uh, the difficulties of data collection tools in the field, and, and it kind of all, all begins from there. So we understand there are a lot of challenges that start at the provincial level and work their way up to the national level and and all the way to the regional and and to HQ, and uh, it's. It's, it's not something that uh, that's easy for sure. And when we understand the challenges that are coming. Uh, data sharing challenges. Uh, so bottlenecks between the, the ministries, the country offices and the regional offices. And once again, it, it starts at provincial and national country levels. And it's just something that hopefully uh, we can, we can uh, really talk to the colleagues uh, at country offices and regional offices and, and work on, on better data sharing between HQ and them in order to facilitate uh, kind of the 
a better building of the global cholera database moving forward. And one thing, especially from HQ, and I know as well uh, here in Afro, uh, data entry is, is is a big challenge. It's just simply uh, sometimes not enough staff to to continuously manually extract data from CITREPS day after day and week after week. Uh, and uh, this is one of the main reasons why working together with country offices and the regional offices uh, to do to have better data sharing and maybe get access to backend data rather than relying upon CITREPS will, will really help the flow and the production of outputs down the road. So what are the next steps at HQ? As I've mentioned uh, time and time again now, more engagement with country offices to ensure a smoother flow of data directly from the ministry through the country to the region all the way up to HQ. And this means more consistent daily and weekly data which would allow us to shift our time allocation from entry, data entry, to data analysis and outputs. And uh, that all being said, the way we can do that is to share and continue to share knowledge between HQ and regional and, and country offices back and forth. And I think we can all work together better to, to share data and to create better outputs and more efficient and faster outputs. Uh, one of the ways we're doing that now is we're developing a version two of the global entry data template that I shared earlier. This one will have uh, a bit more harmonization with the GTFCC recommendations, meaning the variables will be the same. But we, one of the things Alexandra mentioned was to not overburden countries. And, and if we want country offices to be able to fill out these templates. We don't want to overburden them with too much work on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-week -week basis. So I think this would provide a really good point of discussion on how we can align with GTFCC recommendations on uh, data entry for variables, how what variables are most important, and kind of what's, what is the cutoff point between are we overburdening the country office versus uh, how can we expect to get a consistent week-to-week, day-to-day uh, data entry from these countries? So uh, in addition to that, we continue to automate our data flows. As I've shared already, we have a lot of automation done in R and in XMART already that helps us to generate outputs in the blink of an eye. And this means less effort on our shoulders, less, less weight on the shoulders of regional offices and country offices to create these data packs and, and daily reports and weekly bulletins, which you know provide a challenge every single week of a lot of manual work. The more we can automate that, the less weight uh, on all of our shoulders for that. So, and of course, maybe a bit longer term down the road, this is the setup of a global cholera dashboard, something with Power BI that we can that we can have set up. So all of this to say, uh, we all of this data is really for response action across borders and regions and, and just to help out as much as we can. So thanks everyone, obrigado, and uh, we'll open it up to questions. Thank you.